Hey YouTube, we're on to part three already of the top 40 rarest gaming systems that I own. Uh, and uh, it's getting to some really rare ones, so hopefully you guys have heard these. I'd be curious to know if you own these. And uh, let's start with number uh, 20. Thanks for watching. Alright, number 20 on my list is the Neo Geo CDZ system by SNK. Came out in 1996, only in Japan. Uh, now, a little background of the system, why it was released. Neo Geo had the AES system, which was a cartridge based system. Uh, and it was very popular, but the cart cartridges were very expensive, hundreds of dollars or more. So they released a kind of a more uh, a less expensive system that played CDs. And unfortunately, that system, the load times were very, very slow. Uh, even today, just looking back on it, it was very, very slow. Um, so in order to uh, combat that, they released the CDs, CDZ system later on in its life. Um, didn't sell very well, uh, but it is a lot, a lot faster loading time than the original CD uh, system. Now there is a front loader uh, CD system as well, which is uh, actually pretty rare as well. I don't own that, uh, but I do own this one, the CDZ, and there's a lot of great gains for the Neo Geo. It's one of my favorite systems of all time. And um, on to number 19. All right, number uh, 19. <laughs> this is my favorite uh, computer, guys, so it shouldn't come in stock to you that uh, this is a Commodore SX64. This thing is a beast. It's really heavy. Um, now it's known as, over in Europe, and I believe in Australia as well, as the Executive uh, 64 um, computer. came out in 1983. Um, it's hard to know how many of these actually were sold. I've heard rumors that about 80,000 of these were actually made. Uh, these were a lot more popular over in Australia and Europe than they were here in the States. The serial number on this one is a GA1. There are several other, there's several series of, of serial numbers. This is the very first run that they made. Um, let me open it up. And what it, why it's so cool is because it's the very first uh, portable um, color computer. Now there are other portable computers that came out before this, but this is essentially it's a, a Commodore 64 portable. It's got this little tiny screen on it. There was a, a DX model as well, which I would have two uh, ROM drives, but uh, overall this is a really cool computer. It works perfect even today. And it'd be funny to uh, take this to like a Starbucks or something. And, and uh, this thing weighs a ton. It'd be funny to take it to Starbucks and use it to uh, work on something, see what people's reactions would be. I'd be uh, I'd get a kick out of that <laughs> to watch it. But anyway, on to uh, number 18. Number 18 on my list is the NEC TurboGrafx CD attachment for the TurboGrafx 16. This came out in 1990 uh, in the United States, and it's actually the very first um, console to play CDs here in the States, which is kind of cool. Now, the thing is, it was very, very expensive when it first came out. It was about $400 price tag, that's US dollars. And uh, because of that, um, it didn't sell very well. But it has got a lot of great games on it, uh, and I definitely recommend um, checking it out. I think there's a couple emulators on the Wii and, and other um, downloads as well. You can, you can check out some games on here. So, on to number 17. Number 17 on my list is, now a lot of people think the Famicom is actually the very first Nintendo game system ever made. That's not true. That's false. They made a lot of Pong clones back in the, starting through uh, 1977 through 1979. In 1978, they produced the TV games, Color TV Games 15 Pong system. Now, it's basically, it's a Pong system, but it plays in color, which is cool. It's got these removable paddles, which is really neat. Uh, only sold in Japan, didn't come out in the States, but it's pretty cool if a uh, collection have a uh, piece having a collection. On to number 16. Number Sweet 16 is Casio Lupi, only released in Japan in 1995. It's a 32-bit system. I did a, a detailed review on this on a previous video, so I encourage you guys to watch this. But um, it, it plays cards. It's, it's the only system targeted only for females, really. And there's a printer here, and you can print out uh, stickers and a whole bunch of things. And the games here, there's only a select few games that came out for it. Uh, the controller looks kind of odd as well. This isn't Casio's first attempt in the gaming market. They made a bunch of uh, MSX computers back in the day in Japan as well. But uh, this is number Sweet 16. This is the Casio Loopy, not number 15. Number 15 on my list is the NEC PC Engine Shuttle. It came out in 1989, only in Japan again. Uh, it's a variation. It looks like a, a shuttle, and the controllers are a little different as well. I'll do a review over the system um, a little later. But uh, happy console gamer. Did an awesome review of this. Just recently picked it up. I know Luke Morris has uh, one of these as well. It doesn't play um, CD attachments, which is uh, kind of strange that they would do that. 
but it has AB out, uh, which is nice, and just a really cool looking system, one of my favorite looking systems. Looks like something out of Star Trek. <laughs> on to number 14. Number 14 on my list is one of the coolest systems I own, I think. It's the Dyna 2-in-1. Came, came out by a company called Telegames back in 1986. Now, Telegames was a, uh, a British company, and uh, they had the rights to make uh, ColecoVision games. And what they did was they made this clone, and it plays uh, ColecoVision games, okay? It also plays SG-1000 games, which is really cool. The controls are really cool. If you guys want to see the controls, I did a v uh, video review on this earlier on. Uh, you can check it out there. Now, the downside on this, this system, it does play both uh, systems is cool, but for the ColecoVision, some games require, you know, the paddle, they got the numbers on there. Uh, some games require that on the controls, and unfortunately those are on the system itself, so those are really difficult to play. However, it is compatible with all the SG-1000 games and like 90% of the ColecoVision games due to that reason, but super cool collect, uh, system. It's fairly rare. I got this complete new in box when I bought it. Uh, on to number uh, 13. Guys, this is number on number 13. I know a lot of you Sega fans will really enjoy this clone. It's probably one of the better built clones I, I've seen. It's called a Dreamcast. Um, it's, it's really rare. I, I got lucky. I got on a, um, a website, that, but once they do sell it every once in a while, but it doesn't come out very often. What it is, it's a Dreamcast. It's significantly smaller. I did a review on this on another video, so check that out. But it's also got a built-in screen here, and you can take it to go. It comes with a car adapter, so you can take it to go. It's definitely not portable in the sense that you can, it's a hand, not a handheld I should say, but it's portable in the sense you can take it with you on the go with the built-in screen. It plays every Dreamcast game. Uh, it's great. Obviously, like House of the Dead and, and shooter games won't work for it very well, but awesome game. It's really built very well. Definitely recommend if you can find one of these. It's a Dreamcast on number 12. Number 12, a lot of the Nintendo fans will like the system. It's Nintendo IQ, and it came out uh, in China only. In 2003, and what it is, I did a review on this again, another bit review. Uh, so if you were interested in finding out more, check out that video. It, it looks a lot like if you were to take like an Xbox, original Xbox controller, and and, and breed it with um, a Dreamcast controller, and then breed that with a Nintendo 64 controller. That's what you get with this. It's basically it's a plug and play system. All the games are on on cards like this, and you can download the games in kiosks all over China. And uh, Nintendo made the system because. Um, Piracy is a huge issue in China, and they want to avoid that. So, and there's obviously a lot of people who live in China, so they want to do that. All the games, it's a Nintendo 64 system, plugs in the TV, and all the games are in Chinese. I think it's Mandarin, um, but uh, it's an awesome system. And uh, check out, I'm going to have a gameplay video coming up soon to show you some of the, the game footage on the system. But it's amazing to think that you can fit a Nintendo 64 system in like a, a handheld like this. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Nintendo made this, but they did. So, on to number 11. Number 11 is the Panasonic Q. It's probably one of the better looking systems I've seen. Came out in 2001, only in Japan, uh, by Panasonic. And uh, it's through an arrangement, that agreement, uh, through Nintendo. And what it is, it's a GameCube and DVD player all-in-one uh, combo. Now, it didn't sell very well because it was a very expensive price tag. It was, I don't know, like 500 bucks or something like that. But basically, the people didn't take long to figure out that they could get a GameCube and a DVD player far less than they could buy this for. But because of that, didn't sell very well. It's pretty rare, um, and uh, a lot of collectors seek these things. Uh, it, it's a very cool front, uh, and if I angle it the right way, I can probably blind you. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching this, this video, guys. Uh, next one will be my top 10 rarest consoles of all time. Uh, what do you guys think it's going to be? What's number one? I'm curious. Uh, and until next time, uh, stay classy, YouTube. Take care. Bye-bye.